Android ROMs. Basically the magical thing that makes one Android device different from another. Now, the main reason why I'm doing this video is because now I've experienced two different ROMs. In particular, back in the day I had a Samsung Galaxy Nexus and the reason why I chose that phone was because it was a pure Google phone and that is it is running a version of Android that comes directly from Google, no manufacturer edits or modifications. Over time, as I retired that phone and got a new one, I opted for a phone that comes from Sony. Now, Sony has their own ROM. Essentially, they took the base Android from Google and added their own things to it. And in doing so, they've created essentially their own interpretation of the Android experience. In this episode, what I'm going to do is I'm going to compare my experience with the Sony Xperia to my experience on the Galaxy Nexus and just to highlight some key differences between the two ROMs. I guess this video particularly applies to you if you're actually moving from a Nexus device that is pure Android to a Sony device. So yeah, that's what we're going to do this Wednesday. Well, let's jump right into the conclusion after the break. Hello and welcome to another Random Wednesday episode. So, essentially what I'm going to do today is I'm just going to walk through some of the key differences I've noticed between the Sony ROM and the stock Android experience. Please note that in this particular video, I'm going to be talking about the Android 4.4.4 KitKat version of the Android OS. Obviously, if we're looking at a different version, then things might not be exactly the same but I guess this would still be a good starting point to be going from. In my notes here, I essentially have basically all these difference in three different categories, the good, the bad, and the things that exist but I don't really use. So yeah, I know that rolls right off the tongue. So anyway, let's begin. Without any further ado, let's start with the good. One thing I really hated about the stock ROM is the fact that if you have auto brightness on, essentially you have zero control over the brightness of your screen. That is not the case with my Xperia Z1. When I have brightness set to auto, I can still actually move the slider and as a result, have essentially still a customizable auto experience. In my opinion, definitely much better than basically having no choice whatsoever. The next thing of note is the quick settings panel. Now in stock Android, essentially what you have is just a whole bunch of panels that you can actually interact with, but Essentially, the panels they give you is the panels you have. On the Xperia ROM, what you can actually do is you can choose what items you want on that screen. And what this means is you can actually remove the settings you don't want to use, and you can add in the settings that you might need but are not there by default. Unfortunately, this is slightly restricted in a sense that you only have a fixed list of items to choose from. So, unfortunately, that is not perfect, but it is still a lot better than a stock ROM. Third, Xperia themes. Now, I'll be honest, this is purely cosmetic, but essentially in stock Android, you don't really have much of a choice as to, you know, any color scheming options. Sure, individual apps may let you change the color scheme. However, that only applies for that one particular app. All the other apps probably use some kind of default. Like I said, this is purely cosmetic. There's nothing functional or particularly important about this, but I appreciate the idea of allowing the user to actually customize things to their liking. So well, the Sony ROM score point in this regard. Next up is the status bar. Now, there are two important things that I want to mention. The first is the fact that you can actually customize the items inside the status bar. Now, in all honesty, this particular point actually belongs under features I don't use because similar to the quick settings panel, essentially you are limited to just a series of settings and I find everything listed there pretty important. So I never have occasion to actually basically switch anything off. However, that entire panel has that one cool setting and that is to actually display the battery percentage inside the status bar itself. For a device running stock ROMs, essentially you do not have this ability. You just see a pictorial representation of how much battery you have left, but never the actual numerical percentage, which I feel gives me a better gauge of how much battery is actually left. Of course, you can actually download additional widgets to do this, so this isn't, you know, the hugest of huge problems. However, it's great that this feature is natively offered in a ROM itself. Moving on to our fifth point, the Sony ROM actually comes with an extremely feature-packed camera app. 
Now, this actually remains true for a lot of devices that are manufactured by third parties. You'll probably get a fancy camera app that gives you more than, you know, what the Google ROM actually has. Having said that, I still feel that it is commendable to Sony for having a feature-packed camera app. This app really does a lot of things, including stabilization, HDR, natively within the app itself. I just love everything camera-related with this particular phone. I feel that, well, the camera quality is just great, and the camera app complements this very well. Of course, I'm not here to talk about hardware, so I won't go too much into the actual camera itself. So yeah, suffice to say, we give points to the camera app for lots of controls, including manual ones. So alright, we are basically done with the good. Let's now move on to the bad. I only have three points on this, so let's take it from the top. First, the Sony ROM comes with an interesting little windowing feature. Essentially, you can open up these little mini apps and they will float on top of whatever other application you are using. While that seems like a pretty interesting addition to, you know, what stock Android actually provides, it turns out being not so useful. Unfortunately, despite the fact that my particular device has a 5-inch screen, ultimately, there still isn't really a lot of space for apps to actually stack up on top of each other. One particular thing that really sucks with the addition of this feature is the fact that to launch this feature, Sony has actually added a little bar to the recent apps page. Now, this I particularly don't like because I really like to use my full screen to see all my recent apps. However, there is just this little bar that you can never close that is sort of in the way. This is one of the few features that I really feel uncomfortable about that is basically hindering an otherwise excellent ROM. Next, we move on to the calendar app. Now, here's the deal. When I actually use stock Android on my Galaxy Nexus, my calendar app is actually Google Calendar. I really enjoyed that app. Whatever you wanted to do, you could do it really quickly. The moment you launched the app, you had an overall view of your coming week. All in all, a very good interpretation, a very good take on the concept of an electronic calendar. Now, on my Xperia Z1, instead of having Google Calendar, I had some kind of custom created calendar app, probably installed by Sony, that, well, just doesn't function quite as well. Now, this is a smaller problem, though one worth mentioning. If you actually own a Sony device and, you know, aren't too happy with the calendar experience, you can actually pop onto the Google Play Store and download Google Calendar. You will probably have a better time. So yeah, this is where the Sony ROM loses points. They replaced a very good tool with a kinda subpar one. So now we move on to the third item, which is one that I'm actually slightly suspicious about, but cannot confirm if it's true. On the Sony ROM, I feel that background apps tend to be killed quite quickly. This is different from my experience with the stock Android ROM. If it's something that you leave in the background, and when you go back to it, chances are it has been cached properly, and returning to it is generally quite quick. If it has any components that you expect to run in the background, that will continue. However, on the Sony ROM, sometimes I feel that that is not the case. In particular, sometimes my messages on things like WhatsApp or Facebook Messenger actually come in late. And this is actually despite the fact that they are actually supposed to have some kind of background service that is continuously running and should respond immediately to any incoming message. I never had such problems on my Galaxy Nexus running stock ROM. Even when it got old and really cluttered up with apps, this still functioned properly. But that seems to not be the case for a brand new Xperia. So, well, that is one thing to note as well. Like I said, I cannot really confirm if the particular ROM is aggressively killing background apps. Unfortunately, I have no way of confirming if that is true. I'm just saying it kind of feels like that. So that is one point that you might have to look out for. All right, that's all for the bad. Let us now move on to the three more features that is there, but I don't actually use. Starting from the top is the Xperia connectivity menu. Since this is a Sony product, I am of course not at all surprised by the fact that there is an entire menu in the settings that basically allows the Xperia to connect to pretty much anything Sony has created so far. Notable entries in that menu include actually connecting a PlayStation 3 controller to your phone, you know, because that's totally portable and stuff, and also the fact that you can actually perform what is called a trope. 
Generally, that refers to things like screen mirroring, you know, sending videos to a big screen or, you know, casting audio to whatever other audio device that you have. Ultimately, all these seem to be just friendly names for things that exist. I mean, for example, when I wanted to connect my phone to my computer such that my phone actually sends the audio via Bluetooth to my computer, that basically showed up as a troll as well, even though that is pretty generic, you know, just Bluetooth audio mirroring. Unfortunately, I'm not able to use any of the other troll features, in particular screen mirroring, because, well, our HD TV is pretty old and doesn't seem to support anything of that sort. However, ultimately, to the theme of this video, well, this is a feature that doesn't exist in the stock Android ROM. Moving on, in the display menu, the Xperia actually has two additional options. One is a feature called X-Reality, which apparently is some kind of imaging processor, some kind of enhancer to make photos and videos look better. Personally, I have this feature off because ultimately it's just an extra step of filtering that I just don't find very necessary. I mean, I've toggled it on and off, I do see a little bit of difference, but it's arguable whether this processing is actually good or bad. An additional feature provided on this page is a white balance setting. Now this one is particularly interesting, essentially you can just shift the tint of the entire screen just to fit you know whatever surroundings you are in. To me this is a cool feature but not a feature that I actually pop in to change. I mean ultimately I can live with having a little bit of an off white balance on my screen. I'm not doing any serious photo editing work so I don't really see a need to tweak this setting. So yeah I mean I really appreciate the fact that Sony is actually you know giving users this particular choice but I don't personally use it. I neglected to mention one additional feature which kind of falls under this particular section and that is the sound option. The Sony ROM allows you to set up custom EQ and other effects that influences all sound playback on a device. While audio players can add their own EQ, this goes one step further by allowing the effects to apply to basically any app. I personally don't use this feature since the original sound is good enough but well, I guess it's good that it's there. Apart from a graphic EQ, you also get bass boost and other spatialization options. Moving on to our very last item for the day, the Sony ROM actually comes with some kind of inbuilt power management feature. Essentially on this screen, you can actually switch on certain power saving features that are supposed to prolong battery life. However, I realized that a lot of these settings essentially mean switching off key components of the phone so essentially, it's nothing miraculous, essentially you're just saying, do less work. As a result, consume less battery. So that's all well and good, except that sometimes, you know, the features that these power settings actually turn off are things that I feel are important. That is of course why I don't actually use any of the entries on that particular page. I mean, I'm very happy with the battery life I'm getting out of this device, so I'm not really complaining. What this also means is I don't find a serious need to switch on any of these features. However, if you ever need to conserve battery life, well, that's how you do it. And there you have it. Basically, we've covered 11 different features today, some good, some bad. Ultimately, what I'm trying to say is, well, the Sony ROM isn't exactly the same as stock ROM, and well, we've seen the differences. As an overall conclusion to this particular video, I want to say that I actually really liked what was done in the Sony ROM. In particular, the points that I've noted as good are really good. These are things that I actually get to use and see in effect every day, and well, these really improve my overall Android experience. The things I've listed as bad are all things you could really live with, or are things that you can work around. I mean, none of these are actually like game-breakingly bad, you can still use the device, it's just a minor inconvenience at best. And then, the features that are there but I don't use can be really good features if you ever need them. Things like power management and connectivity could be dead useful to you if you ever need these features. So yeah, what this means is, all in all, I really like what Sony has done to the ROM. I feel that if you are moving from, you know, a stock Android device to a Sony device, well, you wouldn't actually regret this decision. Of course, I'm not speaking of the hardware, I'm just talking about the software itself. I feel that the changes made were good and ultimately useful to you as a user. So yeah, if you have qualms moving from stock Android to a Sony ROM, 
You don't have to worry, I feel that the change is a good one. Alright, that basically wraps it up for this Random Wednesday episode. I'm sorry it ran a little bit long, but hopefully it was insightful. But yeah, that's all I have to say today. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, you're watching 0612 TV. Hello! If you enjoyed this video, don't forget I appreciate every like, favorite, and comment you give me. If you'd like to see more from me in the future, don't forget to subscribe. For more updates outside of YouTube, do follow my official Twitter account at 0612TV. And if you'd like to see more of my work, you can also check out my About Me page. Once again, thank you very much for watching and until next time, you're watching 0612TV.